this is Tommy Williams and you reach the Tommy Williams Show. Thank you very much for joining in on another episode. We have a great one for you tonight, um, or whatever time it is, where you are. Um, I just wanted to share also, uh, for those new viewers, the platform of our show. Um, the show is dealing with health and wellness in particular, and primarily dealing with the pandemic. You know, we're dealing with a whole lot as a globe right now. And um, so it's really time for us to dig in and most importantly, unify ourselves um, because I think that, you know, in the world of quarantining right now, we really need to be able to understand that we're not doing this alone. So that's this platform of setting. Um, we're really trying to uh, make sure that, you know, you understand that, you know, there's people in all walks of life and industry and race, uh, color, um, sexual preference, um, gender, and um, we all need to come together with this because COVID has no prejudice. It attacks anyone, whether you're weak and susceptible or whether you're strong and ready, it will take you out invariably. So um, my um, stance pretty much is I like to be like a catalyst and just uh, for people who have um, some testimony and we can share. And through that, I'm hoping that you all would, be, would gain awareness and also maybe see some of the misconceptions of COVID and, um, or, or some of the misconceptions that people have of COVID. And, uh, and, and there are a lot out there. And so uh, let's get on with the show. Again, I'm your host, Tommy Williams, and away we go. Let's enjoy. I have actually two guests coming on this evening, uh, one being Marshall, and Marshall is a uh, former sanitation worker in New York City, and um, he's now retired, so congratulations to him. And he's going to discuss with us the ins and outs of uh, sanitation workers' life prior to COVID and then um, having made his decision to retire. And perhaps we'll even find out if he had engaged in his craft or in his field uh, during COVID. So upon discussion, we will uh, be able to uh, get that information to you. And the second, uh, the second person we have coming on, or second guest, will be Mike, Michael. And Michael is a former uh, car salesman, um, always did pretty well with car sales. And uh, then with COVID came the um, change, the shift in economy. And so we're going to find out what Michael decided to do uh, when faced with this pandemic. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. So my first guest I have on here tonight is, uh, is uh, Marshall, also goes by Soldier, and he's out there in New York. What bar are we in? I'm, in? I'm in Staten Island. Staten Island. You know, last week's guest was from Staten Island. We had Katie on. She has a coffee shop out there, and I wish I, I uh, had the name. Um, I would definitely... Is it, uh, is it called Muddy Cup? No, it's not called Muddy Cup. It, no, it's not called Muddy Cup. It's over by the... It's over by the um, the ferry. Is it oh, ferry? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, ferry? So, yeah, she's over by the ferry. She said that she has um, books. It's a book cafe. And she also has, uh, she used to have uh, uh, performers come on there and do you little music and things like that. It was a little, little spot that she had going for a while. And then she talked about the, uh, the, um, the changes since COVID. You know, oh, there's man. been so many changes since COVID, man. Yeah, and, that's uh, crazy. So, um, so Marshall, uh, Marshall is, was in sanitation. Was that action? Is it action generation in, this, in the city or is it in Staten Island as well? You deal with action no, sanitation? I, I, worked in, I worked in Manhattan. Oh, okay. In Manhattan, yeah, okay. 20 years there. 20 years as a sanitation worker. And, and what was, it, what was, what was the big transition, man? Um, you know, um, with sanitation, early on or did you did you work at all during the pandemic or did you get out yeah, prior to yeah, I, work, I worked i worked with the pandemic going on yeah yeah pandemic. so um it's your floor man you know we definitely um or i know i definitely appreciate your years of service and things you know i've been in the city numerous times prior to moving down to, uh, to florida you know i was pressed right up against the bridge and i was in there constantly and uh and the streets were always relatively clean and thank you very much yeah. for all <laughs> so yeah. i want to start by saying that i thank salute you, you thank you um Thanks. and also congratulations on your recent recent retirement Woo! from the industry um, 
Yeah, seems bro. like seems like you got, and, and, you, and you look so young, man. That's fantastic. Yeah, man. Well, yo, hey, I, I, you know what? The, the, the whole thing is uh, making great decisions, I guess you should say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And now we have to make life uh, life decisions right now, like yeah. as in literally, like we have to make decisions that are really, you know, revolve around not just our lives, but the lives of our loved ones as well. And exactly. you know, what we bring into our household. It's kind of crazy right now, man. Um, so why don't you talk to us about um, what things were like prior to and then entering into the pandemic um, with your with the sanitation? Oh, well, you know, before that, it was just the regular, you know, go out there and do your route type of thing. Um, you know, I've always mm -hmm. had a, a a little fear because, you know, like um, like the black bags at the house, you don't know what's in them, you know what I mean? So a lot of guys, you know, they get cut, they get, uh, uh, they sprain their ankles, you know, they, they, they hurt their backs. So, you know, it was always the, the, the fear of the unknown, you know what I mean? Because all, all you know is picking up whatever somebody threw out and, put it in um in the back of the truck, you know? Yes. There's been a time, I can tell you one time, like I picked up a bag and got stuck stuck with a needle at one time. Wow. Like a syringe. Yeah. Yes. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. So how do thank, you how do you handle something like that? Thank God it was a diabetic, you know, it wasn't okay. somebody who was very sickly or, <laughs> or using drugs, you know what I mean? I should say. Yeah. Okay, so but, you uh, have to read retract and find out where the origin of the bag well, match. You know, as soon as something like that happens, you know, they rush you off the street, they come get you, take you to the hospital, and then, you know, okay. they put you through, you're out of work, they yeah, give yeah. you pills, you know, they put you through the whole thing to make sure you're okay, you know? Okay, that's good, that's good. Yeah, yeah. that is great, good. So, um, yep. so um, having uh, your, your regular, was there anything dealing with like, pounds or weight that you walk each day or anything like that? Was there, was there like tonnage or anything like that? Any sort of volume oh, yeah, or was me, just your route? And no, let me tell you this right here. I don't care. See, this is going to start some stuff with the sanitation department between the guys. Because Manhattan is the big boys. We pick up all the weight out there. You know, the other boroughs act like they be picking up a lot of weight. They pick up a lot, but if you want to pick up some weight, you're going to go to the Bronx, Manhattan. And we're doing like maybe 14 tons to 15 tons a day. Oh, wow. Time. Yeah, you know, and you know what? You know you know why? Because you see, I did my little research on this. That's why I asked about the weight and things. Um, yeah. You know, because I was talking about with, with action. I think action, what borough is that? Is that Brooklyn? Or is that uh, oh, action? That, that's um private. That's private, what you're talking, private sanitation. Oh, okay. I, that's I work for the city. You're with the city. Yeah, I work Got for the city in New York. Okay. The white trucks. That's Action, how I think, is uh, the green trucks, I think. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you had like 14, geez, 14 tons. That's, 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 that's yeah. a big, that's a big route. Yeah. So, um, that's a so big route, in that, a, heavy bag. a lot of heavy bags. So you already, you had medical issues and things like that and, and whatnot and, and some things to be concerned about, about, um, each day when you go out on your route. But then COVID. Now, when did when did you when did to your knowledge and in, in your if you were to track it or or or, or think back to um, when did you first start hearing about COVID and when did it start piquing your interest or or concerns uh, when you, with I, regard to your I, I started hearing about it I think like late January. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because a, a guy at, at, on the job that's in my row in the row of my locker. He's like a, uh, what's some people that's like a home, he was like a phobia, it was a phobia of the, you know, cause he was like, he was a sanitation worker and it was funny cause he was like, um, he had a phobia of, of cleanliness, you know uh -huh. what I mean? So okay. talking about the virus, he mm -hmm. always be talking about like, you know, you heard about that virus and he's saying this and he's saying that, and this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen. So, you know, I, he was talking about it a lot, but then as I started seeing it on TV, you know, and then seeing the, yeah. the, the, you know, the, the coming of it, it was kind of mm -hmm. scary, you know? So that's when I became yeah. a believer. And then when the job actually was like, you know, doing a lot of changes because of the COVID and being careful yeah. and handing out masks and all that, that's when I knew right. it was more. It's real. Okay, so, so handing out masks. So that brings me to the PPE. 
I mean, how, how did they have you, how did they have all situated, like um, prior to COVID, did they, did they issue gloves and things like that to help you stay safe and, and whatnot? No, they just, they, they handed out masks. They, hand, they, they handed out gloves too. Yeah, they handed out gloves. They handed out both. Uh, you know, you know prior, prior to COVID, just on a given day, you're out there in the sanitation industry, you're out there um, in the city um, doing your job. They, did they say, all right, um, Marshall, you know, here, here, you know, here's your equipment for the day. You have gloves. You have your, you know, hat, maybe sign or whatever symbol or whatever T-shirt. Did they give you any gloves or any type of anything? Because I know sometimes you're dealing with different smells. I know, like chicken. If it, you know, chicken. I know even if you throw it out and I and you sit it out in your own bag after a while, you know, the smell reeks and it yeah. stays in there for a long time. But also you have chemicals and things. I know some people throw out things and they, you know, they just don't have this total disregard. You know, you just want to just chuck it, right? Yeah. And um, and if it leaks or whatever, have you, did you have masks or any type of um, PPEs? Uh, did you have any type of Yeah, they, they uh, giving out masks. They were, during the COVID, they was giving out masks, gloves, you know. Okay. Everything. But, you know, you wear, you know, being a sanitation worker, you wear other gloves on top of that. Yeah. You know, because they was giving out regular, regular rubber gloves. But, you know, you have to have the other gloves to really to protect your hands from anything yeah. in the bags and, you know. Give gotcha. you more of a, a, a grip so you don't just, you know, because, you know, when you think about it, a sanitation where you use your hands every day, all day, you know, all so day. that protecting your hands and having mm -hmm. the right gear on is, is very important, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that yeah. Mask is the, you know, you don't know who's coughing in the bag, who's throwing mm -hmm. up, and the, you know, because I see, we see this stuff, you know, you'd be hanging out in Manhattan and you look at the corner basket and you'll see like maybe somebody vomited on it, you know? Yeah, and you got the job is to clean it up, throw it out, you know. So there's a yeah. lot of stuff. It's a it's, it's a nasty job, but one of the yeah, best yeah. jobs sure. in the world. Sure, and that's essential. I mean, you know, you're essential. Yeah. And and you know yeah, what? Exactly. They, you know, it's, it's it's crazy because now they're coming up with essential work. You know, and it's like you know, so many people who are essential. I mean, you know, essentially the 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 world would be uh, total pollutants if and everything else and just a, a pile of trash. If it weren't for sanitation or somebody to come by and at least clean it up and keep it tidy. Yeah. And so you all you are. Really think about it, but you know, there's somebody that's going to actually come and get that and pick that yeah. up and it might get all yeah. over them when they close. You know, just like yeah. you, we want, we, you know, this is a big pet peeve too in the job. Um, the dogs, like you could be working and they see you getting ready to pick the bag up and they let their dog pee right on the bag in front of you. You know, it's like. Mm -hmm. Disrespectful. Yeah. So, you know, you got to yeah. really protect sure yourself, man. Sure it is. Yeah. Well, you know, outside of, uh, well, let me ask you this. When you had decided to retire, what was your, what were your factors? Because retirement was always, you know, and I'm, I, I don't know because I'm not at that point yet. We had that discussion earlier, but, you know, um, what, you know, you have conversations with your family or within yourself and you say, you know what, am I ready? What are the factors that are kind of guiding me to the go ahead and exit stage left? What were those things that kind of, you know, prompted you to go ahead and just say, you know what, it's time? Well, one thing was the, um, one of the main things was the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, while, even though we are essential, but, you know, I'm coming to work still, you know, and I work with a partner. Yes. You know, and uh, the thing is that we're still at the garage, you know what I mean? And, you know, yeah. social distancing, is, they was pra we was practicing social distance, but it's like, it, sh it should have been a lot different, you know what I mean? And I, you know, I ain't no boss in them, but it, I think there could have been another way that we could have worked the situation out instead of putting other guys in harm's way, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, besides that, man, like I said, it was just about, like, really do what we have to do, me and my partner. You know, we're wiping down inside the truck. We're spraying, you know, trying to, you know, as much precaution as possible. Sure. And uh, to, to start out there, you know what I mean? Because uh, once I go out there, it's me and my partner against the world, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. it's about getting back home safely to your family, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And going home feeling good and not bringing the job home, you know? My yeah, back, yeah. Leg. You know, and because you know, like I said, the your elements out there, you're, you're, what's that word? Uh, you're in it. You're in the elements. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you have really, you really have to come home and and or, or take a shower at the job and change up and 
Yeah. But make sure you're going home clean. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Similar to the nurses when you get out of the scrubs, right? You want to leave yeah, all that stuff. Before, right? Yeah, you you want to leave that your car. You know, the things you take for granted inside your car, grabbing the handle, your steering wheel, touching the radio. Wow. Dang. Rubbing your Didn't eyes. Think about all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's important, man. Yeah. So now, you know, on with with family and things. Do you have uh do you have kids that are in school right this No, time? my kids is grown, man. My youngest is getting ready to turn 20, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Is he almost out of the house, huh? Or is he out of the house? No, but she she's up at she well, she's she lives with her mother, but she's doing homeschooling in Maryland because she goes to uh, Old Dominion in Virginia. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, she ODU. Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, she's in, she wants she's um studying marine biology. Oh boy. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's a super yeah, field. That's what I say. Yeah. So um so New York is shutting down again right now, right? What's the status on New York City right now? Or or you know, New York? Man, I'm ready for New York City to open up, man. I you know, a lot of people have that uh you know, you hear a lot of different conversations about the vaccine and all that. Would you take it? Would you would you not? Are you going to take it and all that? And I'm all for taking it, man, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. going to be one of the first. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let it do what it got to do and let like a couple million, you know, a million people or something, let's check out the side mm -hmm. effects. But it's definitely mm -hmm. one of those things on my plan is I'm going to get that. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you know, ever since I retired during COVID, Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about retirement, it's like, you know, I'm relaxing, I'm able to hang out, I ain't got to go to work, I'm able to take care of a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me and my wife can go and hit the town, but uh, ever since COVID, it's like my life's been on pause. So, you know, when you work 20 years, mm -hmm. I mean, what I feel like, when you work 20 years like that and you waiting to retire, waiting for that time to come, this ain't the way you wanted to retire, you know? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Well, God yeah. bless us all. Hello? I don't know if you're still there, bro. Oh, man, you know, we, we're trying to do this. Um, you know, it's been a great conversation. I, I learned a lot, you know, about, you know, sanitation and all that they're going through. Hopefully, you know, people who are watching this you know, understand all the way from keeping their pets. I mean, you know, you know my wife, I'm going to make sure I have a conversation, you know, because, um, you know, there's people out there and, you know, this is our future. And, and, and you know what, uh, we've got to look out for one another. And I think this is where the unity comes across the world. And this is why I'm doing this show is because it's very important that we, that we respect and we acknowledge everybody. There's nobody left behind. I mean, you know, I wanted to have a stripper come on actually this evening as well, because you know what, their, their lives have changed too, you know, yeah. from gripping poles inside of the place to maybe twirling around on a pole in their place and, and having people watch them online. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't know be the same response maybe so i'm not you know that's for yeah. somebody else to judge but but you know what i'll tell you you know inquiring minds want to know i want to know you know how how people's worlds have are changing through this covid yeah I mean, you know, it's a I think very it's big change very big change you know what's very so crazy big. man i was telling not to, i'm not to change um change it up but not to cut you off as i say but you know i was telling my wife about you know i'm like family and I'm only speaking on because you spoke on like discussing with your wife. Like now it's about like really having everything you like to do in your house now. You know, it yeah. this comes back. You know, it's just, it's really like if you ain't got a pool in your backyard, if you you know you was able to have a house and you mm -hmm. you gotta get that pool back there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just in case right. of all the entertainment and stuff that you like to do has to be at the home now. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. for me, New York City will never be the same. You know, yeah, certainly. nightlife, the three o'clock in the morning, squeak in the yeah. club, and and and, 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 and you know, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a lot of side eyedness going on for a very long time with people. When people, you know, come in and they're, you know, seemingly like they're not the, the, the cleanest or whatever have you, it's gonna be a lot going on for a while. And you know, with with reason. Um, yeah. Do you have any plans for the holiday? No, we're just going to go hang out. You know, my, my family's kind of really, really tight. So we're just going to go hang out with my moms and my pops, you know, exchange some gifts. Yeah. New Year's Eve, and then Christmas Day, everybody just stays home and hang out. Yeah. That's yeah. about it, you know? Yeah. Nice and Check. easy. Yeah. 
you got to just cherish each day, each day and you got to be a little bit, you got to think outside the box, but you know, you can still get the job done and be thankful and, 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 you know, spread that love and, and enjoy the time. And uh, yeah. I wish you the best, Marshall, you know, absolutely, man, because, because what you've done and what you're doing and continue to do is very important to the planet, man. So I want you to take care of yourself and, and, and take care of your family and God bless you. Stay safe. Thank you, man. Salute. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on. All right, take care, bro. Folks, next I have uh, Michael. Mike's coming on here, and he's uh, going to tell us all about what he's been dealing with with COVID. Uh, it's a, happens to be a, a good buddy of mine, and um, I thought that he'd be a fantastic person to come on and talk about the transition from industries. And uh, here's Mike coming in now. Mike. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so used to saying good morning. Everywhere I go, I say good morning. I'm terribly sorry. Good evening, everybody. Buddy, it's uh, 10 after 7. I feel like I'm Larry King. Well, actually, you're, that's your role. So um, I hope everybody's healthy and safe, first of all. And um, my condolences uh, to you and your family. Um, so COVID, what has it done for me? Oh, God. Yeah, Mike. So, so you know, so um, let me tell you, Mike, Mike was in my wedding. Knew Mike for maybe about, um, she's 40-something years. And um, we talk yeah. all the time. He's a, a, a hell of a person. Mike's been uh, through so much, and he's um, very resilient. And uh, so I have him on the to stay focused, Mike. I'm here. And buddy. let's get talk it. about COVID. So, so um, Mike, let me get, just lead, lead you through a couple of um, couple of questions and things. Yeah. Um, so prior to COVID. Um, first of all, Mike has twins, he's married, has twins, and um, <clears throat> he was, uh, hey, Mike's like, hey, yeah, yeah. so Mike is, uh, Mike was in Zimbabwe sales for a very long time. Mike always lands on his feet. He's quite the uh, energetic and charismatic person, and um, <clears throat> so he's always been involved with sales, but things kind of shifted as COVID entered yeah. the scene. So Mike, why don't you talk about prior to COVID um, with the economy and how you were able to shift and, and, and bend. And then um, with your final chapter um, leading into COVID and how things had transitioned for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, my story is this, I, I, I've always been in sales. Um, I, I, well, I, I used to do automotive sales most recently. Prior to that, I was doing franchise and business development, and uh, I was quite successful in it. And um, really what transpired is, is that my father passed away a year ago, and uh, my mom going to be three years ago, and things kind of changed, and you start thinking about other things that you always wanted to do. In the midst of all of this, uh, coming up to where I am now uh, with the COVID, is, is that when, I, when my dad died, I was able to take a little time to reflect and to you know, just kind of think of what I wanted to do. And I was looking to start another company and um, it didn't go so well. And it just kind of parted ways with the, with the individuals. Everything's good, but um, I've always been painting uh, for the last, uh, I'm 52, at last almost 17 years, 15 years actually. And I've always been doing it as a secondary income and it's been going pretty good, not too bad, but not enough to sustain. And so, What's happened is, is that my whole family is home now. So um, my children are, are doing virtual learning um, because of COVID. My wife is home because of uh, COVID and she takes care of them and, and I break up the fights because they're gonna be 10. But uh, so the thing is, is that I've really been very fortunate uh, that I've been able to stay home and reflect. In that time, I've been looking at other opportunities and what can I do because everything was shut down due to COVID. It was insanity. And, um, you know, it really affected and it affected me personally as far as from uh, uh, people that I know that have, have unfortunately lost their fight with it. And um, it's been a total of four most recently. And um, it's, uh, it's really... A very stressful thing for a lot of people. I feel very fortunate that I'm able to still be here and be able to be doing what I'm doing. So, so with the yeah. So what? So what? Um. So you were you were in sales prior to. You're always pretty good at sales. So you know, did you when you decided to leave automotive sales? Did you 
try to read your resumes or do you have to time to try to you know self-reflect and figure out how am i going to go back out here and do sales yeah i i was um i was fortunate where i was able to just take some time off um and I just reflect on what I really wanted to do for the first time in my life because I've always been jumping from lily pad to lily pad, you know, chasing the dollar, trying to make as much as I can, trying to provide for the family and, and do the best that you can. And this was really the first time in my life that I was able to take a, a moment back, a real moment back. I was able to do it about 15 years ago prior to my accident. Um, and then, uh, but really now. And I stumbled on a website. Everything is virtual now, right? So I stumbled on a Porsche website um, for automotive sales, and I, uh, you know, I proposed to them, "What about my artwork? You know, auctioning off my artwork?" And they kind of liked the idea. And it's taken. Mike's over. been doing painting, uh, painting by numbers for years. <laughs> and, um, and this guy, I mean, you know, let me tell you something. He just like. He, he's he's a cat. He just lands on his feet. You could chuck him up in the air and spin him around fifty times, and he's gonna find his way. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, well, thanks, buddy. I, I you know the thing is is this for everyone. I read this book when the economy crashed in '08. I was out of work for two years, so it sometimes it takes a little bit longer to land on your feet than others. But the one thing that you have to do is never, never, never tap out. Never give up. You got to just keep on focusing on the now. You got to focus on what's happening right now. As my mother would always say, focus on the positive. What's positive about today? What's positive about the, uh, the moment? And even if everything was crumbling around me and there was one smidgen of positivity, that's all that I would bullseye on and I would focus on. And it has really gotten me through. It may have taken me a little bit longer, but we all have our journey. We all have our struggles. We all have our benefits and our positives. And you're going to get to where you're supposed to be. And when you get there, it's going to seem like you were always there. And that's what I'm experiencing now is that um, I, I really can't believe that I'm actually able to do this. It's like, I always joke around. It's like being retired. You know, I feel like I'm 122 years old. My name is Sal. I'm moving down to Florida and I'm going to do watercolor painting on the beach. I mean, that's what I'm doing, except I so have to so, so so tell me this and that's exactly what you're doing but what is it exactly you're doing and, and how and and how does it work right now are you you have twins as i said before your twins are at home you now decided to take on an online painting business or what's the contract that you have exactly mikey and um and how does that work with covid do you still have to go out and get your stuff do you order your supplies to come no, in to do you do out. anything how does what you do, how does what you do um, how was it affected by COVID? Oh, well, the thing is, is that there's no gatherings. I mean, it's very minimal in gatherings. I mean, here in Georgia, there's, I think people are a little bit more carefree, um, as far as on going out, not wearing masks, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, you know, it's, uh, for me, I, you know, if I'm outside by myself, I don't wear a mask. If I'm wearing, if I'm in a crowd, or a small, I always put on a mask. It's just, you know, it's a 30 second thing to save your life. And for me, I need to stick around for another 50 years. You know, it's, uh, I just, I'm not going to risk um, my ego, internal ego saying that ah, it's okay. It's okay for the hyper thought of losing my life to COVID and my kids, kids not being with that, with, you know, not being able to be with me. So, um, you know, put the mask on, do what you got to do. It's, uh, it's not a big thing. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to kill you. Uh, it's just, you know, the whole phrase is not going to kill you. It's going to, it could kill you if you, if you don't do it. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Gotta, so you've managed through COVID to be able to, um, self-reflect, redirect also. Really kind of be, be, I mean, really I've been, I haven't really gone anywhere. You know, I, I really haven't gone anywhere. I mean, I, I go for a drive with the cars. I go to a car show. Uh, was just starting back up, but I have my mask on all the time. I keep my distance because I love my cars. Um, and then I go drive around locally. I go to a grocery store. And you're, and you're a Porsche enthusiast. That's what I'm made this extra yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, well, <laughs> I, I, I love everything automotive, anything with wheels, anything with a motor, but really cars. And Porsche, for me, has always been a dream. And uh, I have a Fiat too. I have a little Abarth, little racer Abarth, um, because that was a big thing in my family too. 
Um, but Porsche, for me, I've always dreamt of it. And, you know, after my mom passed away, I decided to buy uh, my first Porsche, very minimal, $5,000 car, nothing crazy, a little 944, but it's all original. It's got the 911 wheels on it, and, and I love it. And now, after my father passed away, I, uh, I invested in another one, a uh, little 914. And um, it's, uh, it's fantastic. And, I've, and the thing is, I make money on these cars. You know, the one thing that I vowed to myself is that anything I get, if I buy it, I have to be able to make a profit on it. Um, and here in Georgia, if you buy a car 25 years or older, you, you get full depreciation on that car. So you're able to save the tax benefit on that of not paying that six and a half or seven percent wherever you are. And you're able to get something that you always dreamt of. And you can re it's not really reliving your youth. It's living your dreams if you're a car fanatic of like, oh, my God, I would have loved to have that or I would have loved to have that. You know, uh, me and Tommy, when we were younger, uh, his dad had some really nice cars and they weren't anything like. You know, Lamborghinis. It was a, it was a, it was a 1983. Wait, what year was the Marquee? 82, right? 82. Yeah, Marquee. it was 82. Yeah. And we the used brilliant. to go around and we would drive that car. He was 17, I was 16. We call ourselves Starsky and Hutch, and we would go around and we would have fun. You know, innocent fun. And um, then his dad got a 1984 Lincoln Town car. It was the Cartier edition. It had the aluminum wheels originally with the lines going down, like on the marks. And then he switched. It. He wanted the wire wheels, so we got the wire wheels. And it was gray velour interior. And Mr. Williams was like, listen, he knew we were car guys. And um, he was like, listen, Tommy, Michael, you're listening to, don't drive that car. Don't even get in it. Don't even get it. We're like, no, Mr. Williams, no, dad, no, we're not doing it. No, and, 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 and this was the Jersey Shore. So we were like all around town, down by the beach, every place under the sun. And then um, we put on, you know, but, 10 miles, 15 miles, and we're like, oh, God, what are we going to do? Your father's going to figure it out. We tried driving the car backwards. It didn't work. You know, the Ferris Bueller, that was back <laughs> in 85. Ferris Bueller was just out. And we were trying all the stuff that we saw on the TV and it never worked. And for some reason, he never said anything. So we were very fortunate, believe me. And, yeah. um, but, uh, but I, I, I love Porsche. It's a great investment. And, and, then, um, and, then, and then my mother's uh 735 bmw oh, oh god. boy BMW. And then they found you got that oh god i came over your house and you're like look at this and we we're doing checking out the seats it had like um uh it was about six buttons it was the front the middle the back the high yeah and, we and then they gave around the driveway. And this is what i told you was going to happen mike we're going to get sidetracked so let me just tell you this then my, my, my parents, Sorry, the parents gave me that car um, so they were like, you know, we didn't really need it at the time, my wife and I, but they said, you know, we're going to drive it back up. They were in Florida. They got the car in 89 and it was like maybe 2004 or whatever. And they were like, you know, they had still had no miles because they got carried down there and everything else. My mother retired like a year, uh, year after, or two years after she got the car. So, um, anyway, they delivered it to us. And then the moment I got, to, got in the car, the next morning, the transmission went. <laughs> and I was like, isn't this something? I waited all my life to ride this damn thing and the transmission goes. So uh so Mike um Yeah, tell me. So uh we should have actually had this conversation prior to this man, but you know what? Important. It's like, yeah, we'll be fine. Yeah, this is how it's going. But this you is know, great. this is real life here. It's real yeah, stuff. This is real life, you know, and, and sad to say, folks, this is how we this is how we communicate. Um, this is how we now communicate. The new normal is, you know, you're you're zooming, you're you're talking to your buddy, you're talking to your family on Zoom, or you're talking on FaceTime, and and it has to work. You know, um, haven't seen Mike in ages, but you know what? We're holding it together. And you just, you know, you just gotta hold on to faith, everybody. So, you know, Mike, just to recap, Mike's been have Mike's had his uh, he's been in sales for for numerous years. He now got into um, online uh, sales of artwork. He does very, very well. He's constantly, it's, Mike, why don't you show us some of the artwork that's in the room? Yeah, let me see how I can do uh, Hold on, wait a minute, I got, can we do it like, nope. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I, I put this screen thing on and I'd have to get off to try and fix it, so. Well, you know what, Mike? Um, we're gonna, uh, my Instagram page. Okay, good enough, give some information. Yeah, Michael Ledwitz, it's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-L-E-D-W-I-T-Z. And also, 
you could check out my Instagram page. And also you could see my artwork. It'll be going up tomorrow on pcarmarket.com. So it's P as in Porsche, carmarket.com. And I put my stuff on usually weekly up there. And um, it goes great. And it's uh, it's a lot. Of, it's all 911s. I'm actually working on, I just, they're doing Ferraris now too. So I'm going to be working on a 1972 Ferrari Daytona uh, painting at the back end shot. And um, I'll show it to you later. It's pretty neat. And, uh, and I'm working on one right now. This is a Porsche. 911 to 1989. It's a club sport. Club sports were made. Uh, what they did is they took out the radio, they took out the air conditioning unit, and they were about four thousand dollars less than what the uh, base regular uh, Porsche 911 was. This car that I'm working on is an, called Irish Green. It was the only one of 38 that was coming into the United States. It has 9,500 miles on it, and these cars are valued about 300 to 450 thousand dollars. And uh, so I'm doing a painting for a gentleman, and um, it should be pretty neat. And uh, but I do all stuff. If you had a Yugo, if anybody knows Yugo, they would get the humor. Uh, <laughs> I'd paint you a Yugo. I don't care what it is; it doesn't matter. Um, it's about expression and uh, being able to um, give something to you that you can share with uh, future generations of your family. And you know, art is a great thing. And every, I encourage everybody to go paint because here's the thing. Art is art. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, if you look at um, uh, uh, Pollock, uh, Pollock was in the 50s and the 40s. It was, you know, he'd take art and he just flash it on canvas. And um, then, uh, you know, they're millions of dollars. So, you know, express yourself and in the best possible ways, you know. Remember to love yourself, too, because it's just, um, you know, you only get one life here. And the moments are the moments. And you got to make the best of those moments and you got to take that time to breathe for yourself there's a great book that i read that i share with everybody it's called the four agreements by don miguel ruiz it's 1995 you want to get the color copy it's like watercolors okay color creates a biochemical change in the mind if you see oranges if you see lavenders everything is um reflective of that so when the economy crashed uh in 08 and this relates to COVID as well um that I got this book and it's number one, be impeccable with your word. Don't say anything against yourself. Don't say anything against others. Number two, don't take anything personal. It's that person's perception of their reality. It has nothing to do with your reality. It's their reality. And if it's off kilter to you, that's their issue. It's not yours. Number three, never make assumption. How many times in life do we always make assumptions? Oh my God, it's gonna be the worst thing. Or oh my God, it's gonna be the best thing. Take the moment for what the moment is and focus on that. And number four, be your best. If you're face down, if anybody saw Creed 2, right? Um, Tommy's a big boxer. His father was a big boxer. Uh, I was judo, but, you know, I'm not a big fighter. Anyway, so the thing is, is Creed 2. There's a scene when he, he gets knocked down and he's retraining with Rocky. And he's running in the desert. And it's 100 and God knows what degrees. And... Um, he collapses. Apollo Creed's son collapses, Adonis. And Rocky's in the car. He's in his seven. He's like, get up, Adonis. Get up, Adonis. And the music's going down. Da, 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 da. Get up, Adonis. Get up. And you see him in the back Mike, mirror. Come on. He's flat on the floor. And he gets up. <laughs> and at the end of the movie, he wins the, he wins the world championship. But it's about those moments in your life that you have to pick yourself up regardless of what's transpired, regardless of what's transpired, as crazy as that sounds, uh, and me talking from the outside, not experiencing what you personally are experiencing, whoever is listening. But just take that moment, stop, breathe, step out of the way, get your thoughts together, and raise yourself up, because there's only one you, and you're created for a reason, you know? And even if there this is, whole Mike. COVID thing is going through, we got to realize that there's everybody else is still going. And the people who have lost to this tragedy, we cherish their memory. They live with inside of us, right? We absorb them into all of our pores, right? Hey, and Mike, now, let me ask what you what do we got to do? We got to fight and go forward. Mike, Mike, let me ask you this. Okay. Yes, buddy. And, and thanks. And thanks for plugging the books that you've read. I'm sure those yeah. authors are very happy about that. So listen, um, I want I want you to um, share with share with us anything going on with uh, 
Mike, you there? Yep, I'm right here. Hold on, bud. I lost you for a second. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. All right. That's so what's sorry. going on in, in Georgia now? Is it is it open, closed? What's happening with the state? With the state, everything is open now. Everything's open. Everything. Yep, everything is open. Um, the numbers are, you know, it's flu season, so numbers will spike a little bit. Um, I was actually just at the doctor's office uh, the other day for my shoulder. I said, how's it going? You know, my orthopedic you surgeon. No, I don't get a flu shot. I did not okay. get a flu shot. What do you think myself. about what do you think about the vaccine for COVID? Do you think you might, you know, be interested in that or what, what's your uh, take I on that? I have to see more about it for me personally. Lisa's all for it, my wife. But me, I, I'd rather find out more about it before I make a statement because I don't know if it will work and it can prevent, then yes, I would consider it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Then but I don't know kids, until it comes out. And your kids, your kids are back in back in school. Um, they're, do they're they virtual. have any type of social distancing, any type? They're virtual. I can't hear you. Okay, that so the state went down. So, and, and, and Georgia is, um, and so the students, although the state's open, the schools are closed, but they're not open all, for virtual all, Tommy, learning. Not all. Okay. The, uh, the schools are open for those who choose. Originally, it was going to be virtual learning okay. up Excellent. until December. And then the parents were really kind of stirring it up. And then they open back up, but you have a choice. You could, so for us personally, I am, I'm probably going to be, they're probably be out for the full year and do virtual learning for the full year gotcha. for us. Mm -hmm. um, just to be safe. Um, you know, it's just uh, until things start to get dialed in more, uh, especially with the new administration, I think will be helpful. Um, then yes, I, I think that that might be a, a great thing. So let's hope, let's just hope for, you know, it's about, the, the end result. It's about making it the best for our society and our country. And, um, you know, hopefully everybody's staying healthy and, uh, and that's it. You know, I'm, it's not a political yeah. thing. It's just, you know, an yeah. end result thing, whatever needs to get done. Well, Mike, you know, um, you know, just to, just to recap and just, you know, uh, we want to find you, Mike, we want a final word. And I just want you to just, you know, talk about, um, and we're going to land this thing, Mike. We're going to land it, you and I, right? We're going to put this thing down. Brother, I got your back to the last breath. You know it. Mike, we're going to put this thing down in 15 seconds. And what we're doing is I just want you to tell the people who are watching to just, you know, how, um, how they might want to go about getting in touch with themselves and realizing that, you know what, even though the economy shifted, even, even though you might have to fight to go get your food, you know, and, 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 and bring that, um, and bring that dollar home. There's also going inside of yourself and maybe being inspired to come up with a service, come up with something due to COVID. Now that's what I'm trying to do as well. And, and I really wanted you to come on to, um, to kind of be the person that used to work out in the field and now you're home. Um, and for people to have hope knowing that, you know what, with every door that closes, there's another several that open. In Absolutely. this case, we have COVID. And the, the door that's closing is our door allowing us to go out and be outside the way we are accustomed to. But it also harbors hope. And it, it, it offers us uh, other options to open up doors with regard to COVID. I have a buddy of mine, I'm going to just lay down one example, who I'm working with, who has... Um, who has bed and, uh, bed and Airbnbs. And those Airbnbs now are being turned into, uh, into COVID quarantining stations. So, you know, he has everybody coming in, spraying, doing whatever they need to do. And the families can go there and quarantine. Now, not only do you have to do you, you quarantine, but you quarantine in a nice serene area and it's all waterfront properties and he has several of them. That's um, actually and brilliant. He's, and, he's, and he's getting more. That's just one way. And if, and if you get inside of your mind, folks, um, I think that there's plenty of opportunities, you know, the cleaning industry, we had people come and clean up the house the other day. And, you know, when they came in, you know, they, they, they do things a little bit differently and try to be on the cutting, try to be on the cutting edge. They have different products and different sales pitches and things, you know, nothing's guaranteed, nothing's proven. Um, and I think they walked away maybe with a bottle of a can of Lysol now that I'm thinking about it, but you know, you know, Lysol is very expensive now. So that was like taking my wife's diamond ring, you know, but um, <laughs> <laughs> why I oughta, you know, 
Um, but you know what? We we gotta we gotta rethink this whole situation. And I think America's gonna, America. I think the world's gonna be all right. We just we're very very engine into um, intuitive. We're very, very intuitive. We're very Not ingenuitive. Intuitive. Ingenuitive, and we, and we and we know how to think on our feet. We look at all the things that we've come up with. All the research are doing their part. We all can't design ways to get rid of COVID, but we are coming up with ways to reduce the symptoms. And I'm going to have on, which leads me into future guests coming on and talking about the herbs and different things that they extract from plants and this and that that's been around like uh, uh, in the Caribbeans for years. Um, but those are ways, and those are the, the, the things of inspiration that, that we can insert into our new today to help out feeding our families and giving us some hope for tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think we landed this chopper together, Mike. And, uh, and with that, you know, it's great having you on the show. You know, uh, this is one of my best friends right here. He's That's very my brother, best. right there. And, um, and there's and no I'm difference. Proud of them. You know, we've, we've shared so many conversations um, through the years about, T hey, man, I don't know what I'm going to do, man. This, you know, the, the things going bottom up, always with his heart, you know, and similar to me, always gets their ass chewed up and, and kicked in the ass at the end. But you know what? We this never go down. Yes, and he landed on the moon. Right. And yeah, he, and you know, I'll give point. you this this thought just so everyone can really understand the magnitude of where I've come from. The economy was so bad, and, and with uh, cars and so forth, I, I was literally at ground zero a year and a half ago. I mean, zero dollars, zero dollars. I was, I, you know, four people to take care of. The sales were bad. It was a paycheck to paycheck type of scenario. It was very very challenging, and. If it wasn't for uh, a very close member of the family uh, that helped me, um, and I didn't ask for it, um, I, I would not have been able to keep my my home. So uh, everything got worked out. Things got paid back. It's all good. Now here I am. <clears throat> sorry. Now here I am um, doing what I love. Technically not even work because it's what I did all the time anyway and being able to earn more money than I ever did, ever, uh, in my career. And um, it's just the fact of, it's all about um, tweaking. Tony Robbins says it best, it's millimeters to the moon. You know, when, you, when you're pushing a rocket through outer space, when it goes from one atmosphere to the other, is it some massive gap? No, it's, it's hairlines, micro hairlines to the next level, but it takes so much energy, so much force to push you through. Do not give up. Do not give up. It is not over. It is not over. Um, there's, you know, it's just about hunkering down, realizing that, yes, it is there. And, and push everybody's thoughts out of the way that are negative. It's their own insecurities. Like I said, going back to number two, don't take anything personal. It's that person's perception of reality. It's not yours. How do you think that we got to where we are? How do you think that the one percenters of what we look in society, like Tommy's sister, Wendy, she, she made a, a massive success for herself in the television community, in the radio community, and everything has filtered and expanded outward. Tommy has been an incredible educator. His parents have been incredible educators. His father has been an author. Um, you know, his sister Wanda was, went to Tufts University. I mean, these are, you know, things that we just went for it. And we didn't know any better. And it was the same in my household too. And it's just, just because it takes a little bit longer, when you get there, you're there. I didn't find my real calling until now I'm 52, going to be 53 in March. It seems like I've always been here, even though I've always done it. But now that I look backwards, I'm not looking for the next step to try and figure it out. So um, just focus on your dreams. You know, take this time if you are not working um, and uh, you're struggling. I'm sorry. Uh, I hope that you will be okay. Surround yourself by the positive influences that you can. Um, look outside the box. You know, um, just realize that it's not over. Don't look through that hyper microscope of negativity. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know, expand yourself, absorb, 
everything that you can positive. Listen to every podcast. Listen to Tommy. Listen, I'll tell you one thing about my brother right here. He never has a bad word to say about anybody. And if he's saying something, it's a very minimal thing. It's only the truth of what he speaks um, to try and expand and being able to help people. And uh, sometimes you got to go through the trenches and experience it yourself before you can realize what um, your true calling is. And so here we are. Now we're talking on a podcast. And now he's expressing to hopefully the world that – that we can help you. And uh, if we are a reference, fantastic. And um, so anything that I can do, uh, I'll help. Anything, any words of encouragement, any ideas, whatever it can be, I'm more than happy to help the cause. So fantastic. there you go. Mike, again, I want you to, I want you to leave your, um, your information one more time for the people just so we can be left with that. Be talented and he can be reached by... Yes. So the, the best way to reach me, you can, my email is automotive artist number one at gmail.com as well as uh, Michael Ledwitz. Uh, that's M I C H A E L L E D W I T Z. That's on Instagram. And I, I think that that would be best. Uh, should I leave a number or no, we don't need to leave a number. You, you yeah, reach me by email. That's probably the best way. Reach out, reach out. Yeah. Super, super guy, super talent. And uh, thank you very much. Facebook. Thank you very much, everyone, Mike. We had a wonderful time with you. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, buddy? All right, brother. Love you, buddy. Thank love you. to everybody. Love to all. all right, we'll see you later. So thank you very much, folks, for joining in on this Tommy Williams uh, episode of Tommy Williams Show, the Tommy Williams Show. Coming at you. Giving you updates on the planet and letting you know how people are moving and shaking through COVID. It's not all bad, as you see. We, you know, we had one fella come on. He's retired now. Retired from sanitation. 20 years in. 20 years of who knows what's in those doggone black bags, right? Brings a brand new re- uh, meaning to what's popping, because you don't know what's popping out of those bags. We um, were told that he got uh, tagged with a syringe. Fortunately, it was uh, diabetic. Um, you know, he got a chance to experience the transition of COVID and understand also and be grateful for the reason for his or grateful for his um, decision to uh, retire. So he's out of the game. And uh, now he's just simply trying to live his life, as he said, and, uh, and move on in a peaceful way, the way he always dreamed of retiring. So, you know, it's things like that that we need to hear. Um, you know, what is retirement these days? I mean, you work, 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 and you retire. Yeah, you want to sit home, but you also want to go places. You want to do things. You want to go on a cruise, right? You can't do it yet. So you got to keep on living, folks. That's the bottom line. We've got to live longer. We've got to persevere. We've got to make sure we take care of ourselves. Health is the next um, topic for the next show. I think that this would lead uh, no better segue for me to have uh, than to have a, um, a person on um, uh, talking about health and the importance thereof um, so that we can kind of prepare ourselves and 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 keep ourselves whole and sustained during COVID so that we can have some longevity because we don't want to go out during COVID. That's not the way we want to go out, folks. I will tell you one thing. This show right here, and I was going to try to put up some pictures and images, my mom, sensational person, sensational woman, um, I will share a couple of pictures of, um, and, and, I, and I hope that it's okay with you all. Um, I'm going to actually pull them up on my phone. And uh, this is my mother right here. And she was actually in the, uh, she's in the brown. I don't know if you could see anything here, but she's in the brown jacket. That's her, my mom, mommy. And um, so I had the pleasure of um, being her number one son for 53 years, her only son actually. Um, And uh, fantastic time. She just passed away actually last Sunday. And uh, here's another shot of Shirley doing what she does best. She's involved with so many organizations, very much the uh, social butterfly, and also very much of the giver. She was always very much the civil servant. 
and um, I sure do miss my mom. And um, this show is dedicated, and this whole, my whole existence with my platform is dedicated to my parents, um, you know, because yeah. they've always been still trying to take care of myself and don't forget the other folks out there because you can't do it alone, folks. And, uh, and I, I believe that this planet is going to be okay. We just have to um, be able to, uh, you know, know how to grab a hold of our fellow man and make sure that we listen and make sure we also look at the signs. There's so many things that we still need to learn about COVID. And in the process, what we need to do is just make sure we take care of ourselves and, and, and wear our masks and, and do what we need to do so we can take care of ourselves and our neighbors and our future. So God bless you all, and thanks for watching, and make it a great day. Thanks for watching the Tommy Williams Show, folks. Bye-bye. Now, glutathione is a big word, but it's the body's own master antioxidant. Oh, it's a scavenger for free radicals, for bacteria, and what's relevant now, viruses. This is new to the marketplace. There's no other product on the market that has the ingredient NASET. And basically NASET increases the production of that glutathione that is in our body already to strengthen and, and enhance our, our immune system and keep it strong. Elevated sense of well-being. Supports muscle strength and endurance. Cognitive function. Powerful liver support. Energy. Helps blood sugar regulation. Superior bioavailability of key ingredients. One of your best defenses against COVID mm -hmm. is a strong immune system. Taking GSH Plus as a daily supplement does all that. And now we have the product out on the market.